second talk was given by Professor Chen Kershi from uh, UC Santa Barbara, and he will talk about the CO theory description of almost topological phases. So let's welcome the speaker. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, Xiao Gang already gave a very good introduction under under a systematic way of constructing all the SPT steps. So actually, I will basically talking about. Uh, similar subject, but actually I promise you that my formula will not involve so much math. <laughs> so, uh, uh, as a promise, and actually I will, I will try to convince you that uh, uh, we can use a, a more conventional and hopefully more intuitive way of understanding this uh, uh, SPD state. Yeah. So let me, let me first give our definition for uh, this uh, SPD state. Uh, actually, my definition is slightly different from uh, from Xiao Gang's definition. So my, my definition is more phenomenological, uh, based on phenomena of those uh, of those uh, uh, SPD states. So first of all, uh, I call these states almost topological phases. So these states actually have a trivial bulk spectrum. Uh, trivial means that the bulk is always gapped and non-degenerate, but they have non-trivial boundary spectrum. But sometimes. Uh, this non-trivial bound structure means that its gap is all degenerate. Sometimes those uh, non-trivialness will will demand certain condition. So, for example, uh, SPD states means that uh, the boundary is only non-trivial when the entire system, including both the bulk and boundary, preserves certain symmetry. Uh, but there's another concept called short range entangled states. So I define it as uh, states with uh, trivial bulk spectrum but non-trivial boundary. Uh, spectrum. But uh, these are states, they do not always need some symmetry. So for example, integer quantum Hall system, although it has a U1 symmetry, but actually we can break the U1 symmetry, the boundary will still be stable, will still be stable against any perturbation. So uh, integer quantum Hall state based on my definition will be a short range entangled state. So these kind of states are called short range entangled because uh, they do not have any topological entanglement entropy. If you calculate that, uh, you know, we, we won't see any power in time. So, so one why we call it a short range entanglement state. And uh, you can see that a second concept will include the first concept as a subset. Okay, as a subset. So, this is the relation between all these concepts. So, uh, the big circle, uh, big white circle, is uh, all the quantum disordered phases. And actually, most of them are trivial. Most of them, they are just a direct product state. They are just uh, totally uninteresting to us. And uh, there's uh, one special kind of uh, uh, quantum disordered phases is a topological phase. <coughs> it's a fractional quantum Hall system, for example, and also some Tori code model uh, systems like that. So those systems have a, have a non-trivial bulk spectrum, have a bulk topological de degeneracy, so they are called topological phases. And these phases, I call them almost topological, with short range entangled states and also uh, SPD states. They have trivial bulk spectrum and non-trivial boundary spectrum. And also, yesterday, Xiao Gang introduced another concept called an invertible topological order. So in this figure, invertible topological order are those states which are short range entangled state, but they are not SPD states. Uh, like integer quantum Hall state and the E8 state, the Shao Kang mentioned yesterday, they, they have non-trivial boundary, but those boundaries do not need any symmetry. So they are short range entangled, but they are not SPD. So they are uh, invertible topological order. That, and that's my, that's my definition. That's a slightly different from, from Shao Kang. Okay, so here's the outline of my talk. So, uh, so I will use a uh, conventional field theory description of all these uh, bosonic short range entangles and, and also bosonic SPD states. By conventional, I mean that this field theory only involves conventional Landau order parameter. Okay, they do not involve a group element itself. It involves a Landau order parameter. So they are conventional type of a field theory. So uh, I claim that the field theory can do the following things. It can describe the boundary states uh, very nicely. It can show us the relation between different SPD states in a very intuitive way. And also can give us the bulk wave function, give us the bulk ground wave function of all of these uh, uh, SPD states. OK, and also, uh, all these SPD states, it, uh, it, it has some symmetry. But suppose I couple the uh, SPD state to some gauge field then uh, this SPD state will become some topological state because I gauge those symmetry. So after I gauge those symmetry, then the system will have the anions, the dis uh, will have the anion and the loop excitations, <laughs> and those anion and the loop will have some uh, non-trivial statistics because I gauge the SPD states. 
So the field view will also tell us how to calculate the statistics angle between the onion or loop statistics. Okay. I will show you that. Uh, well, I'm not sure whether I can get there today, but I can definitely show you tomorrow. And then the uh, uh, second part, I, uh, I will also introduce a field theory description and, and also classification for bosonic shorter entangled or set and SPD state beyond the group cohomology. Uh, we, so I can give you a field theory classification and systematic de de uh, description for those states. So these states, they share some common feature. They all involve certain gravitational anomaly. Okay, gravitational uh, effects will have to be involved in this uh, description of these states. And uh, last, I will talk about interacting fermionic SPD states. So, so far, this part are all bosonic SPD. So the last part will be fermionic SPD states. And I will try to make some connection to standard model and also grand unified theory. That's a pretty ambitious goal, but I will do that uh, tomorrow. OK, so uh, let's start with, uh, I mean, so Janet told me that this is uh, supposed to be a pedagogical lecture. So let me start with the simplest uh, bosonic SPD state ever, which is the whole phase. Everyone knows what it is. Okay, the Hodian phase is a spin one chain, and actually it's described by this one single line equation. It's actually given by Hodian itself, and then, uh, you know, as Xiaoga mentioned, uh, Tai Tai actually gave a very nice, uh, a very nice uh, interpretation of, uh, uh, of this equation. So this equation is a uh, one plus one dimensional non stick model, but unlike Xiaogang's theory, here this vector n is an order parameter. It's a unit vector, it's a three component unit vector. It's an order parameter. The physical meaning is the anti ferromagnetic nail order parameter. Okay, it's a very simple physical meaning. Uh, the difference, I'm oh, sorry, uh, the whole down phase will have a theta term. The theta term comes from the fact that the pi 2 s2 equals z. This 2 here is a space time dimension, and this 2 is the manifold of the ground state. The ground state manifold because the vector n can point at any direction, so the manifold will be s2. So because pi 2 s2 equals z, we can write down this term. So Hodian says that. Uh, uh, the whole damn phase corresponds with theta equals to 2 pi. Okay, so theta equals 2 pi. Okay, so uh, before I study the theory with the theta equals 2 pi, let me first study an even simpler theorem. Let me first study the theory with the theta equals 0. Okay, that's, a, that's an extremely trivial theory, but let me start that anyway. So uh, if theta equals 0, this becomes a standard nonlinear sigma model. Okay, and we know that in 1 plus 1 dimension nonlinear sigma model, the, the g will always flow to infinity on the rg. Okay, and uh, this is action, but uh, in this matter, we always want to study the ground state wave function and things like that. So in order to study that, let's just uh, convert the action or Lagrangian into a Hamiltonian. Okay, this is a Hamiltonian for this action with the theta equals zero. This Hamiltonian is a gradient xn, and this is L. L is the uh, canonical angular momentum conjugate to vector n on every position x, on every position x, okay? And when g flows to infinity, you can see that I can almost just drop this term. And the first term will dominate. And the first term, the ground state wave function is that L equals 0 everywhere. Okay? So this is a direct product state. This is a direct product. You can see that the ground state wave function for this theory is a direct product state. And every location x has L equals 0. L is the angular moment conjugate to the vector. Okay? So this means that without the theta term, this theory will give me a direct product state. So this theory describes a uh, trivial quantum disorder. Okay, so now let's turn on the theta term. So we all know that when the theta equals 2 pi, sorry, uh, when theta equals 2 pi, suppose I compact by space time, I make space time a compact manifold, then uh, this, in, I mean, this action does not depend on theta term at all. Okay? This, this, this theta term does not contribute anything to the, to the Partition function okay, if I compact by space time. So what it means is that if I open the space boundary, if I give space a boundary, then this term will only play the role as the boundary. Okay, is that clear? Without a boundary, it doesn't play any role to the boundary. So it means that this term only plays the boundary. Okay? So let's open the boundary. So if I open the boundary, this term can be written as the boundary on the right side minus the boundary term on the left side. Okay, the bulk term becomes the boundary term on the left side minus the boundary term on, on, on the right side. And what is the boundary term? This boundary term becomes a west you know, return term. So in a one-dimensional system, the boundary is a zero-dimensional system. And a zero-dimensional system is just a single particle quantum mechanics system. Okay, the single particle quantum mechanics. So it turns out that uh, this uh, Wilson return term describes a point particle moving on a two-dimensional sphere parameter by n. 
and uh, there's a phase angle associated with, uh, with this uh, area. Suppose I start with this point and go to a periodic evolution on a two-dimensional sphere, then I will get the Berry phase. The Berry phase will pro be proportional to this area. Okay, so it means that, uh, yeah, it means that uh, this uh, zero-dimensional boundary will acquire a waste to mineral return term because of the existence of deduction in the bulk. Is that clear? Okay. It means that uh, that theory in the bulk will reduce to this zero plus one dimensional theory on the boundary. But this is a single particle quantum mechanics which we can solve exactly. Yeah, we can solve exactly. So how do we solve that? Okay. So this problem reduced to a single particle moving on a two dimensional sphere with a two pi flux through the sphere. Is that clear? Because, uh, because if I evolve periodically, I will gain a very fast. So it means that this problem becomes a lambda level problem. Okay, becomes a lambda level problem on a two dimensional sphere. Okay, is that, uh, is that clear? And on a sphere, when I have a two pi flux through the sphere, the ground state will be two-fold degenerate. Okay, that's something we can just solve. We can just uh, you know, copy all the solutions from the textbook. On a sphere, if the uh, if I have a two pi flux, the ground state will be two-fold degenerate. And if I parameterize n, using the standard angles, then the ground state wave function of this uh, two-fold degeneracy will look like this. This is a first state, this is a second state. Okay, it's two-fold degenerate. Two-fold degeneracy. Okay, so we get doublet. Okay, in Hodan phase, we are supposed to get doublet at the boundary, right? So now we see the doublet. The doublet comes from the fact that uh, the boundary becomes a zero-dimensional quantum mechanical problem with a two-pi flux through the speed. Okay, then how does this uh, boundary state transform under symmetry, for example? We know that for the anti flow magnetic order parameter, under the time inversal symmetry, the, the order parameter n will change sign. Okay, so the magnetic order will change sign. If n change sign, it corresponds to the fact that theta will go to theta plus pi. Right? No, if theta goes to theta plus pi, then n will change sign. If I put this thing into here, I can see that u will transform to i sigma y u. This is precisely how a crime or stop is supposed to transform. Okay. Is that clear? Okay. This means that although in the bulk, time universal transform over the trivially, change the sign of n, n go to minus n, so t squared equals to 1 in the bulk, but as the boundary, I would get t squared equal to minus 1. Okay. It comes from the solution, it comes from the exact solution as the boundary. Okay. So this field tells us that we can kind of demonstrate the uh, projective representation of symmetry group as the boundary. For an exact solution of the field. Okay, so uh, this is the first example. Let me make the claim now. I want to claim that uh, uh, all the SPT phases with uh, all these symmetries, with almost all the symmetries we care about in terms of matter, okay, with all the symmetries, can be described by the following three equations. All the one plus one dimensional bosonic SPT phase with this symmetry can be described by this equation. All the two plus one SPT with uh, this symmetry can be described by the second equation, three dimensions can be described by this, uh, this equation. Okay, they are all just uh, this simple equation. So you can see that uh, all the one plus one dimensional bosonic SPD phase with all the symmetry, they are basically the same as Hodan phase. Okay, they are, they are all the same equation. Okay, so let me show you another example. This is an example of the one dimensional bosonic SPD with a Z2 plus Z2 cross time inversal symmetry. Okay, the slightly complicated symmetry. So this case was started by Xiao Gang and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and collaborators very thoroughly. So uh, they show that there are 16 uh, different SPD phases okay, with this symmetry in one dimension, there are 16. And they gave the phase, each of them a very strange name, E0, E1, well, I don't know what the name comes from, because actually. 17, but I don't know, it's a Cooper equation or something, I don't know. Okay, yeah, so, so, so these names actually, well, it doesn't mean anything to me. So, yeah, uh, let, me, let me show you that uh, all these 16 phases, they are just described by one single equation, just one equation, just, just the one equation. But how does one equation describe a 16 different phases? It turns out that uh, it's because the vector n can have different transformations under z2 cross z2 cross time inversal. And for example, let me choo choose one, let me pick one. Let me pick, uh, uh, for example, the first z2 will change the sign of n1, n2, but does not change the sign of n3. And a second Z2 change sign of N2, N3, but does not change sign of N1. And Z2T will change sign of N2, but not N1, N3. The rule, I, ch I, choose, uh, I choose the transformations to guarantee that the entire action is invariant 
under the transformation. Okay, that's the only rule I want to I want to make sure. So, so all your all your three Z transformation are unitary. None of them are anti. Uh, time inversal is 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 not unitary. So so I also have to change i to minus i. <coughs> Okay, time inversal here is also change i to minus i. Well, I, mean, I, uh, well, I didn't write that one. Though. Yeah, also change i to minus i. Okay. So if I choose this symmetry action, then this uh, action will be invariant on the symmetry. And then uh, I can still take the solution of the boundary state from the Hodan phase. Okay. And I use this uh, symmetry transformation to operate on the boundary. And I will get this kind of transformation. So d two a will be i sigma z, z two b will sigma s, d two c will be that. And this transformation correspond to correspond to uh, uh, e five here. It correspond to e five here. Okay. So I claim that all these states correspond to different semi transformation on a single equation. Yeah, I also want, yeah, I want to add some term, break it down to the smallest, but, 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 but those terms are not topological. Yeah, 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 some, yeah I can do it, but those terms are not topological. So, yeah, let me keep the, yeah, to keep track of the topological. So, so, so the, the idea is that uh, if you're starting from this period, then you should have been that. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, so all these 16 states are correspond to the different transformation of one single equation. Okay, so the message from this one the example, I already said that, and the advantage of a field theory is that uh, it's very convenient to derive the boundary properties of we already showed you in the one dimension example. Just use the solution, it's a very simple single body point and solution. You can use that solution to describe, to, to derive the boundary properties. It also can give us the ground state wave function, which I will show you later. And also can, uh, you know, it actually gives you some physical construction of all the SPD states, okay? Uh, yeah. Okay, so first let me uh, uh, make some clarification of the meaning of theta term in the field theory. So Xiao Gang already mentioned some of this. So uh, uh, in the standard field theory textbook interpretation of theta term, is that a theta term corresponds to some weight when we sum over some configuration in the space time. Okay? So it means that uh, uh, so theta term will contribute a phase angle e dy theta to every instant of number in the, in the, in the space time. So this would tell us that when theta goes zero and two pi, they're the same theory. Okay, but Xiaogang told us it's, it's already different. Okay, it's, it's, they're, they're not the same theory. So the standard te uh, field theory textbook interpretation of theorem is, is at least incomplete. Okay, it's incomplete. The only thing we can say is that uh, theta goes zero and two pi at the field theory level, they have the same spectrum, okay, same particle function, but they can have very different boundary states and they can have very different ground state wave function. Uh, yeah, but in order to see the ground state wave function or see the boundary state, we have to open the space-time manifold. We cannot keep the space-time manifold closed. We have to open. Once they open, the theta two pi, two pi and zero, they are different. Okay. Okay. So how do we calculate the ground state wave function using the field theory? Okay. This is how we calculate. So uh, suppose I start with a wave function, which is the field theory configuration n. And I, want to uh, and I want to calculate the matrix element okay, between the ground state and, N and another configuration, N prime. How do I do that? I do the path integral uh, with my action S, and I fix time equals to plus infinity equals N, and time equals to minus infinity equals N prime. Okay. Suppose I can do this, uh, suppose I can do this uh, uh, path integral with this constraint exactly, then I can calculate the matrix element. Okay, so now you can see that uh, for all those non sigma I showed you before, if I take g goes to infinity, which is the case we are interested in, we are interested in the disordered phase. Right? Disordered phase by definition means that g will flow to infinity. If I take g goes to infinity, then when theta equals zero, okay, then uh, this part will just be one. Okay, it's just totally trivial. Then this means that uh, the ground state wave function will be an equal wave through position of all the configuration of n without any factor and this side will be the ground state, I mean, will be the direct holdout that I showed you before. Okay, is that clear? It's an equal way through position of all the configuration n. So it becomes, if I change basis to L basis, the angular moment L basis becomes a direct holdout state. Okay. 
So theta equals zero again becomes a direct parallel state, it's a trivial state. But when theta equals to two pi, then I get a phase angle here. It's a zero position of all the configuration n but with a uh, phase <coughs> angle. So what's the phase angle? The phase angle here precisely becomes a uh, a real space with some Novita term. Okay. Imagine that now, now we are talking about a static, a static <coughs> wave function, ground state wave function is static. Okay. A static wave function means that there's no time uh, in a wave function. Okay. So it means that in the wave function, n will only be a function of x. But suppose I take a periodic boundary condition of my one dimensional system, then n become a mapping from a one dimensional ring to a two dimensional target space. Then uh, this phase angle precisely corresponds to the area in the target space enclosed by the image of the mapping. Okay. So this term can be viewed as a, uh, a real space with the Novita term. Okay. And we can also show that a ground state wave function with theta 2 pi and a ground state wave function with theta 0, they are orthogonal to each other. Okay. They are really different states. They are orthogonal to each other. They are, they are, no. And the physical meaning uh, uh, of, the, uh, of the phase back will come out later. So I'm going to discuss physical meaning of a phase factor later. Okay, but here you can show that uh, uh, 0 and 2 pi will give you a different ground state wave function. One is uh, SPD and the other is uh, trivial state. The other is uh, 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 trivial direct product state. Okay. okay, so now another question of when can we use non sigma? When, you can, when can we use field theory? Okay. Of course, field theory is uh, describe the continuum limit, right? So it means that correlation length must be much, much longer than that, I mean, that constant. So this means that uh, this uh, field theory in principle, in principle describes the SPD phase when it's tuned close to an ordered phase. When it's tuned to a close to, close to ordered phase then a close to a critical point, then the correlation length will be much, much longer than the that constant. Then we can use the field theory. However, the field theory will contain some information that we don't want. Because the field theory also contains information about spectrum, about spin wave, right? But those information are not universal topological information, so we will have to ignore them. But once we ignore those information, then uh, and, uh, and as long as we only focus on the topological information, then we can say, okay, uh, the topological information I extract from the field theory is the same as the topological information deep inside the SPD phase, not close to the critical point. Okay, is that clear? So field theory contains some extra information, okay, which we don't want. So we will have to learn to how to screen out those uh, information we don't want. But once we screen them out, then the, the remaining information is still still okay, it's still good. We will win one time because that's a critical property. <laughs> Sorry, field theory has critical properties. Yeah, so exactly. that's very important. I mean, yeah, as I said, yeah, of course, uh, you know, what we really want to study is some, some, some things here, for example, right? So I want to say that topological property here and here are the same. What's different is non-universal problem, like the spectrum, right? So field theory contains spectrum information, but those information are, are, are not interesting. As long as we know how to screen them out, as long as we only focus on topological information, the <coughs> universal property coming from theater term, then uh, those information are the same as the uh, states here. So it's, it's fine, as long as we ignore those uh, uninteresting yeah, information. Okay, another issue is the classification. So this is the table, uh, you know, uh, can quoted from, from Xiao Gang and Zheng Chen and Xie Chen's uh, paper. And I covered up <laughs> some column with uh, spatial symmetry, because I don't think those states are so well understood anyway. So let me just keep track with uh, all the states of without spatial symmetry, with only internal symmetry and time reversal. Like okay, by looking at this uh, table, you can see some strange facts. For example, in zero dimension and two dimension, you can see some Z classification. You have Z here, and Z here, Z here, you know, Z everywhere. But in 1D and 3D, there's no Z at all. Okay, there's absolutely no Z classification at all. But if you go to a higher dimension, you will see that in every even dimension, there's always a lot of Z classification. But in all dimensions, there's never any Z classification. Okay, why is that? Okay, why is that? Okay, so, okay. so in the field theory, it seems like because all the theta terms are written down <coughs> based on homotopy group, 
Then uh, on the homotopy group has to always Z, so you might think that all you Z cuts frame, but that's not correct. Okay? In the one plus one dimension of Hodan phase, although pi 2 S2 equals zeta concentration is still Z2, the reason is that in this system, theta equals to zero and four pi, they are the same state. They can be continuously tuned to each other without any bulk phase transition. Okay. We can argue this way. For example, let me start with a two Hodan phase. Each of them described by the same field theory with theta two pi, and I turn on a coupling between them. And this coupling preserves all the symmetry, the time inversal, SO3, whatever symmetry you want to imagine. Okay? So you can see that if A is uh, negative, then N1 and N2, they are pretty much aligned to each other. Then, uh, then these two theta terms will add up together. So they will become a full pi. Okay? But when A, when A is a positive, N1 and N2, they will be anti parallel to, to each other. Then uh, these two theta terms will cancel each other, eventually they become zero. And in between, there's no phase transition at all. Because both systems are in a strongly disordered phase. The interlayer coupling will not drive any phase. We will not, we will not close the gap. Okay, we will not close. As long as it's not too strong, we will not close the gap. Okay. So this means that although pi 2 s 2 equals z, I mean, this system is already D2 concentration. Okay, but now let's compare this system with a two-dimensional SPT with a U1 symmetry. As I said, two-dimensional SPT Almost all of them can be described by this one single equation. It's a four component vector. It's a O4 and a single model with a theta term. In this, uh, in this system, the U1 symmetry will rotate N1 to N2 together. And we will also rotate N3 and N4. Because N1 and N2 will rotate like a rotor. N3 and N4 will also be the same. Okay, so now let's try to play the same game. Let's start with two theory. Both of them have theta 2 pi and I turn on a coupling between them. But however, because now the theater has a, the theater has a four component here, okay? no matter what sign I give A, the theater will always add up together to four pi. They never cancel out each other. Yeah, I will pause for one minute. The reason is very simple. Okay, we have four n here. If you change the sign of all of them, it's the same sign. Okay, so the key is that I have four. It's an O four vector. It's not O three. Okay, it's O four vector. Okay, so it means that if I add two two pi together, I always get four pi. Never get zero. So in this system, four pi, six pi, eight pi, they all correspond to different theory. So this theory has a Z classification. Okay. Uh, but whether the 2D system has a Z or Z2 classification will depend on the symmetry and the symmetry allowed coupling. So for example, if I consider two, 2D SPT with a Z2 uh, symmetry, okay, they, are both, uh, they are also described by this, uh, the same equation, but now the Z2 symmetry will change the sign of all the N components instead of all the N components. But now, because the symmetry is uh, smaller, has a smaller symmetry, so I allow many, many more couplings. Okay, for example, I can, I can write down couplings that A only couples uh, the first component of two theory together, and B couples the uh, red three components together. Is that right? Yeah. Now, if I fix B, I fix B constant, I change A from plus to minus. I only change the sign of one component of the four. Then in this theory, I can continuously tune four pi to zero without going through any phase transition. So this SPT still has Z2 classification. Okay, still have Z2 classification. Is that clear? Okay. So all I'm saying is that in 2D, and actually in all even dimensions, there are many SPT with Z classification, but whether it's Z or Z2 or ZN, depending on the symmetry and also symmetry allowed coupling. Okay, so if we keep track of all these uh, subtleties, okay, the classification based on this field theory is the same as a cohomology, like the same, as, exactly the same as all the group cohomology. Okay, if you keep track of all the subtleties, okay, sometimes kind of very subtle, but if you keep track of all of them, you get the same classification. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so, so, you know.